Hi everybody, I'm Frank Moran. And I'm Cassie Cruz. Welcome to WatchHollywood.tv. Not that TV. How about that? That TV and TV. Watch Hollywood.tv and the fifth episode of the Internet's Talk Show. Today's episode is all about celebrating Gay Pride Month. And we're going to be meeting some with really interesting people. Mel England from the uh, Best Day Ever. He's the star. And Diane Anderson Milshell. She's the editor in chief of Plus Magazine. And Andy Soccer, who is from the Lavender Effect. Absolutely. He kind of started as a Disney Imagineer. That's really cool. Is that where he started? Yes. Pretty uh, awesome. He's fantastic. Yeah, in addition to that, we'll be talking to director Jeff London, as well as poet Stephen Rains. It's going to be a fantastic episode. What we really want you to do is call in, chat with us, get on Twitter, let us know what you're thinking, engage with us. Because if you engage with us, guess what happens? Uh, free t-shirt and free DVD of Best Day Ever. First time people interact with the show doing that. And the way you do that is you hop on to WatchHollywood.tv. Chat, chat us up there, or you can call in at 213-533-2030. That's 213-533-2030. Enough of, 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 enough about us, though. We want to talk about these interesting people. Yeah. All right, folks, stay tuned, because WatchHollywood.tv is live. WatchHollywood.tv. Check us out. <laughs> really fascinating stories that I want to make sure we talk about today but the one that I want to start with can you talk about the best day ever this is really the first film that deals with a gay midlife crisis would you say that that would be the log line on um, yeah for this totally, film? totally and I've seen it. it it's a wonderful film and it's, it's wonderfully done and, and Mel's fantastic in it oh, thank and you. Could you speak about that a little bit? And then I want to get into some deeper things Okay. That. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we made the film, I guess, about a year and a half ago. And that, you know, Jeff London, I auditioned for Jeff, and then he cast me. And I was a little, you know, overwhelmed, you know, just because of the nature of the subject matter. Uh, but I really related, and I related it in a very interesting way. Um, not so much because... Uh, I was literally necessarily going through my own kind of midlife crisis, but because of what happened in my own personal life with me dealing with AIDS, HIV at such a young age, I just automatically understood what it was like to go through a crisis. And so I had this kind of deep connection with this man who is going through this moment of like, what, you know, what's life all about? Career issues, money issues, have I made my mark, you know, you know all of those things and then a love you know love life problems How, what am i going to do and um so uh, it was a really powerful experience to do that and and to and, and to see i think that was one of the things that became evident right away in discussing the movie with jeff was just this idea we were even talking about it in the green room of how far the gay community has come and this kind of privilege that we have now to even have these problems. Mm -hmm. Like that this guy could even have a midlife crisis because the generation before, all the midlife, I mean, we were even talking about how, you know, the last film to kind of deal with gay men going through a midlife crisis was something like Longtime Companion, where they were dealing with everybody dying from AIDS. So it was like, all of a sudden we have, we get to be old, we get to be married, like, what's that about? So, you know, eventually this guy meets somebody, and so you're like, you know, you hope that they can connect. But it was a really interesting journey, just as a gay man, to, and as a gay actor, to have the opportunity to discuss these things. Because we've been so busy fighting for equal rights, and for gay marriage, and for just for the right to live, that to kind of just get to be normal is almost like a... a a kind of a culture shock in a weird way. Um, I wanted to talk about though what you you hit on two really important things that you're HIV positive, and I believe Diane that you had a great article in Plus Magazine mm -hmm. about Mel, about this very specific issue. Yeah, and it was very deep. I want to make sure we talk about that, but I want to say one thing before we get into that because that's a subject that we're going to lead right into next. Mm -hmm. Is really because of the way the culture is now and the openness and you're able to be who you are without the shame and without the the persecution maybe still i'm sure you still have that but 
not as much, that you're able to experience life like all of the other people with the real things, with real issues, like you're talking about the midlife crisis, right. or being married, or having a partnership, or what's it like to die, or what's it like to live with somebody. You know, all those things are being able to come to light. And one of them is really about the HIV positive issue and how HIV addresses, um, you know, the family, you as a person, the public. And I'd like you guys to talk about that, like in tandem, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, because I'd, I'd like you to talk about the article that Mel did with you and your magazine a little bit, if you don't sure, mind. Sure, sure. Um, that would be really fascinating for me. Yeah, well, one of the things that piqued me what you were talking about is, um, Certainly, the um, the gay community um, and uh, and the LGBT community uh, overall, to a, a little bit lesser extent um, for trans people, but uh, the gay community in particular has gotten to this point where where um, where there is a great deal more acceptance, where there's more people in the country who support same-sex marriages than anything else, who support our right to have employment uh, discrimination clauses and. Things like that, and so um, so you talked about lowering the shame of, of being gay, lowering the stigma. But what's really interesting is there's still a great deal of stigma with being HIV positive. Um, and one thing at the magazine is that generally uh, what we do is on the cover, we're like any other magazine. Uh, we like celebrities on the cover, and we like that because the celebrities on the cover. The celebrity on the cover. And, um, and we like that like every other magazine. We're a health magazine, and I always think of it as the cherry and the cough syrup. You pick up the great, hunky celebrity on the cover, <laughs> and you make sure you read the good, healthy information inside. Uh, well, so, it's very um, scary about HIV positive. A lot of people, it, I think it's the not understanding or having the knowledge, and that's probably what you're peeling away. Yes, absolutely. And we want to remove the stigma of being HIV positive, but I will tell you, when you're a performer, uh, there's still a great deal of stigma, there's a great deal of fear, and a great deal of shame. We have a number of A-list celebrities we know are positive but are not willing to come out yet. Uh, whenever we do have somebody who is willing to come out, um, it's a big deal. And so that is where Mel came in as an, uh, both an out actor and somebody who's out as, as having HIV and living with HIV, and also somebody who has lived with HIV for a number of years because we have, uh, you know, in just a couple of years, the percentage of people with HIV who are over 50 is is going to be the majority, and those are a lot of um, there's a lot of gay men there who lived through like I did, lived through the AIDS crisis, saw all of our friends dying, and um, and now 20 years later have all these like great rights and these great lives and raising half of them have teenagers at home or babies at home and they have spouses mm -hmm. and. 401ks and these things that um, we just never thought we'd have, you yeah. know. So it is kind of overwhelming to to get to this point. But so that was part of some of the things that we were talking with Mel about is about being just open enough to to say, look, there shouldn't be stigma around having HIV. It's a health condition. It's a chronic, manageable health condition. Right. You don't feel shame if you have diabetes. I mean, you you know, shouldn't feel shame if you have HIV. No, absolutely not. And But it also took me <coughs> 20 plus years to get to the point where I would have been capable or ready to, to be public and out about it. Not that, you know, it's funny, now it's changed so much. It is a very manageable disease. But when I was first diagnosed when I was 19 years old, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. way back in the you know last millennium. Well, did it feel like a death sentence? Uh, well, no, that's actually what the doctors, the media, the government, my family, everybody thought I was going to be dead in six months. Okay. I had to do a lot of my own work, right. which included, you know, like spiritual work. And I, I talk about this in the magazine. I, I, I heard Deepak Chopra on the radio saying, you know, uh, uh, I'm an infinite field of potentiality, and I wrote it down on a piece of mm -hmm. notebook paper and taped it above my wall. And I mean, and I also was very lucky because I avoided the AZT while they didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So I was smart and lucky. And what I, is the AZT? Well, that was just one of the drugs that at the time they were using, oh. which actually is now used in antiretroviral. Well, it's an antiretroviral, but uh, it's it's generally not used as much now because no, it's, it's ineffective. Right. But in the very okay. beginning, it was the only thing that uh, that had been approved for use that they oh. thought worked.